She's an actress also for the... Okay, so here's the question. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Rutledge, and if you're watching this video, um, you're the doctor of one of my patients who's undergone the mini gastric bypass. And so one of the questions my patients want to know and our referring physicians want to know is what should be done? I have a patient, she's overweight, she's had a mini gastric bypass. What is the mini gastric bypass and then what do I as a medical doctor have to do? And so the first thing we want to tell our doctor and our patients is the follow-up is pretty easy. It's pretty low maintenance. Take a breath for our patients and for our local doctor we'd like to say, um, again, my name is Dr. Rutledge, my telephone number is 702-215-9550, call me anytime, day or night if you want to talk about the patient. Uh, if you want to send an email, it's drr, that's Dr. R at clos.net, and be more than happy to chat with you about the details. The nice thing is that the one month, three month, six month clinic visits, there's not much to be done other than what we call kind of a well baby clinic appointment. That is, you say hi, you discuss with the patient in general how they're doing, ask them if they have any specific complaints, and that's all. Uh, some doctors at their discretion will obtain blood tests. Uh, we generally don't think that's necessary unless there's some kind of symptom or problem. Now we do see occasionally problems in our patients. The incidence of complications and problems in the year after surgery can be up to as high as 20 percent if you count having an upset stomach and nausea uh, or heartburn as a problem. The most common problem after surgery is an upset stomach with a little bit of irritation or heartburn and the treatment for that in general is to relook at the guidelines to make sure that the patient is eating a healthy diet, generally taking their Tums, occasionally taking some Pepto-Bismol, eating their yogurt and avoiding things that cause gastritis like aspirin Motrin, Aleve, and drugs like that. Avoiding alcohol, cigarettes, soda pop, and coffee, which can cause some heartburn and upset stomach. And with those things, we can generally resolve most upset stomach, heartburn, or what we call for the doctor's sake, a gastritis or an ulcer, which is the most common problem that we see after the surgery. I'm more than happy to participate or help direct that therapy. If you have an upset stomach, uh, the local medical doctor certainly can handle that if he or she wishes, but I'm more than happy to give you direction on how to handle that. We have a several page section that I can send you by email for details on things to avoid, aspirin, alcohol, cigarettes, things like that, and things that are really good for helping to protect the lining of the stomach. Things like yogurt, Tums, and a healthy diet with high amounts of fiber and fresh fruits and vegetables. So don't hesitate to send that to me or just call anytime because we can help with that. Other problems that we do see over the years, not usually in the first weeks, are the development of other things like kidney stones. And we have some sections in the manual and we can talk to you in more detail in other videos about how to protect yourself from kidney stones. Another problem is osteoporosis or, you know, weak or flimsy bones where you don't have enough calcium. Again, the solution and prevention of that is explained in some of the other videos and it's pretty straightforward with the extra Tums, exercise, and uh, eating a healthy diet. That helps with those things. Uh, long term we can see problems with gallbladder disease and that's why we put our patients on the Ursodiol or the Actigol. Uh, we do see people with problems with that sometimes so don't hesitate to call for more information about that. And long term, we do get phone calls about mild elevations in the blood tests that measure the liver function. So it wouldn't be surprising if your doctor decides to get a blood test and checks your liver that the liver tests might be slightly elevated. And that's probably going to be permanent. And that's why we recommend our patients avoid things that damage the liver like Tylenol and alcohol. And that's a good summary of almost everything that we see. Um, we certainly can see other problems, but those are the most common things, and that's what this video is about. Again, let me introduce myself. If you're taking care of one of my patients, my name's Dr. Rutledge, and again, call me 24 hours a day on my cell phone, 702-215-9550, or you can email me. And we have videos and other things like that that's available on the internet on our website, which is www.clos.net. Thanks very much.